Today I'm going to take this tall square recycled plastic pot and turn it into a bog filter to clear up the green water in this small ornamental pond. As you can see the water is incredibly green. I can guarantee that this filter will clear the water, I'm just not sure how long it will take. In this video I'm just going to show how I'll construct the filter and I'll do a follow up vid once the water is clear so we know how long it took. If you don't already know me, my name is Kev, and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain their ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to subscribe and visit my website, ozponds.com. One of the most important things when building a bog filter is having it sized appropriately. This little pond only holds around 200 litres. The pond's going to be home to some white cloud mountain minnows. For small fish like this, the bog only really needs to be about 10% of the pond's volume. But this pond sits under a birch tree, so it's going to get a lot of leaf drop. Decaying leaves will release nutrients, so I want the filter to be able to process those as well. Here's the dimensions of the pot. So the bog is around 20 to 25% of the pond's volume. If you can, I think it's always a good idea to supersize your bog filter. If nothing else, it just gives you less maintenance, and I'm lazy. So speaking of maintenance, a bog should have an easy way to be cleaned and flushed. Here I'm drilling a hole at the bottom of the filter to allow for a clean out valve. The beauty of working with plastic is it's very easy to make holes. To create a watertight seal, I'm using a 1 inch or 25 mil uni seal. Uni seals are so handy when you're making filters like this, and I'll put a link in the description. Now I'm going to insert a piece of 1 inch or 25 mil pressure pipe into the uni seal. This piece of pipe already has a valve attached from a previous project. I'm using some washing detergent to lube up the uni seal because pushing the pipe in is a real bastard. So that's the clean out good to go. Next I'm drilling a hole for the overflow. This is where the water will exit the filter and return to the pond. I'm drilling at about halfway down the pot because I don't want the water splashing from up too high back into the pond. To create a watertight seal here, I'm using a 1 inch or 25 mil bulkhead fitting. Again, I'll put a link in the description. I could just as easily have used a uni seal here, but I thought it would be more helpful to show two different ways of creating a watertight seal. A uni seal is definitely more versatile, as it can be used in rounded pots or containers. A bulkhead is really only useful when the sides are flat, like this pot. The bulkhead is like a bolt and nut, except the bolt is hollow and water can pass through. There's two washers. One goes on the inside of the filter and the other on the outside. You then tighten the nut to create a watertight seal. The next thing I'm going to do is create a bit of a void space at the base of the filter. This is going to allow solid materials like fish waste and broken down leaf material to accumulate in the base of the filter where the clean out valve is. I'm using some of this drainage cell panelling to create my void space. But in the past I've simply added larger rocks to the base to create a void. I measured it up and then cut it using some old secateurs. I have a little piece sitting vertically and here's a good look at the bulkhead fitting from the inside of the filter. There's then a piece over the top to create the void. Next I cut up the pipe for the filter. First I cut the pipe that will take the water down into the base of the filter. I prefer to deliver the water into the base of the filter as it forces the water to travel through all the rock and pebble inside the filter. I also add a breather hole to prevent the filter siphoning back into the pond if the pump shuts off. I'll take a more in-depth look at how all this works in a minute. I also added the pipework for the overflow. So here's what we've got. The clean out valve, right down the bottom. That's one inch. 
this is where the pump will come in. So we've got a little barb fitting there that screws in to the pressure pipe fitting. This is 20 mil or three quarter inch. And that comes up and we'll pump the water down into the base of the filter. Here's the breather hole so that we prevent a siphoning. That will probably then, I'll probably put a little upright vertical pipe so that none, no water at all dribbles out of here. This pipe is the overflow. So this, this will all be filled up with rocks. We've got the void space down the bottom there. The water will exit out here. I'll probably stack some larger rocks in this corner. If this becomes blocked, we have this area that will double as the overflow. The water then goes down through that bulkhead fitting that we added to the side and out and back into the pond. So before I fill it with rock and pebble, I like to give it a little test drive and make sure there's no leaks. And this is why. The bulkhead is leaking, so I need to tighten up that before we proceed. Now that that's done, I can connect the pump. It's connected to the filter with a common 13mm garden hose. The overflow back into the pond is 25mm pipe. It's important that the overflow is always much bigger than the inflow. The flow rate of the pump is 300 litres per hour. I like to size the pump at six times the volume of the filter. It allows for some head loss and pipe friction. So I'm just giving it a run. I like to run it for a day or so before I add the rock, just to make sure there's no leaks. I haven't put any clamp here because it's not really under any pressure. Uh, just some plumber's tape on that barb fitting. I had a bit of a leak. Uh, up it goes and in. You can see nothing's coming out the breather pipe. It's all going straight down. There it goes down the overflow and back into the pond. So I'll just leave it for a day or so and then uh, add the rock and pebble and we should be good to go. I might put some decorative bamboo on this, I'm not sure yet. Um, I'll see what I think when it clears up. Once the bulkhead was fixed and I'd ran the filter for a few days to check for leaks, I could lay the rock. First some larger lemon sized rock, then some 20 mil river pebble, then finally some scoria. It doesn't really matter what type of rock you use, these were all just rock and pebble that I had laying around in the yard. Then I rinsed everything off. The scurry is very dirty and we don't want all that nutrient in the pond. While I'm rinsing it off, the clean out valve is open and that's giving the birch a good water. Once the water coming out of the filter is clean, I can shut the valve and fill it up with water. The pump I used is a low volt model. And I just recently published a video showing how I extend the cord on this pump by 20 metres. That's how far away the power point is. I'll link that video in the description if you're interested. You can see the flow leaving the filter is just a trickle. I find bulk filters work best with a slow flow. I didn't need to add a vertical pipe to the breather hole as the flow was so slow, but that's not always the case. You can see some of the different ways that I've prevented water leaving the breather hole in other bog filter videos. Anyway, that's the filter at the moment. I added some Bacopa and an Impatient directly into the Scoria. You also probably noticed I painted the pipework, so it blended better with the pots. Anyway, this is how the water looks the day I finish building the filter and we'll see how long it takes to clear. I'm predicting no more than two months, but we'll see. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, feel free to tickle the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. See ya.